By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome to a brand new episode. And in today's episode, we are going to start with the video reports of the Raging Bull series. The Raging Bull series is a tournament held every year in Amsterdam. And it is a fully Swedish old school tournament. So get ready to see the best of the best of the Swedish decks here uh, in the Netherlands. And today we are looking at a round one match between Wouter and Hank. Wouter is playing his ATOG deck. It's mono red with a lot of artifacts. It's looking mighty powerful. And he's taking on Hank and he's playing with his deck BB-8. It's also an artifact deck, a robot deck with trikes, with copies, with a lot of direct damage. But before I go to the deck decks, I would first like to point out that if you want to skip this and go to the matches, as always, you can do that by checking the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, it will get you straight to the action. And also, if you would like to know more about this tournament, the Raging Bull series, check out the description below for all the ins and outs of this beautiful, beautiful tournament. And now we are ready for the deck deck section of this match. The first deck that we're going to look at is actually the deck of Hank BB-8. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Hank BB-8. So when we look at this, it is a robots deck, right? The strategy is quite clear. You've got your four Triskelions, your four Suchis, and your four copy artifacts. So you just want to play out these cards as fast as you can copy them, preferably copy the Triskelion. Of course, Triskelion 6 to cast for a 1-1 one, one creature from Antiquities that comes into play with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. So it's basically a 4-4. Four, four. You can take those counters off to deal 1 damage to any target. So you can also just point those 3 counters directly at your opponent. That means that under the right circumstances, you can use your Triskelion to attack for 4, deal 4 points of damage, and then in your second main phase or after the damage is dealt, you can take the counters off and deal an additional 3 damage. So basically it's 7 damage potentially. And then of course, if you can copy those and you can have your own army of Triskelions, it gets scary really, really fast. Now when we look at the rest of the deck, it is all business, right? We see a lot of direct damage, 4 Lightning Bolts, 4 Cyblasts, so that alone is uh, is good for 28 points of direct damage, right? So that is pretty, pretty brutal. And then we also have the Abyss to kind of deal with uh, uh, the creatures of the opponent. Abyss, of course, very, very strong because um, you need to destroy or bury target non-artifact creature. And of course, Hank is only playing with artifacts. So for him, the Abyss does nothing, but for his opponent, it can be pretty brutal. Um, and then we see the regular power cards, right? The full power nine. We see the restricted cards, Library of Alexandria, of course, Mind Twist, Tutor. This is a super strong deck. And I think it's going to be a very tough first round one match here for Wouter. But Wouter's, Wouter's deck is also not to be underestimated. Let's take a look at his ATOC list. And here we see the deck of Wouter. So this is a classic ATOC deck, right? ATOC, one red and one to cast for a one, two creature. You can sacrifice an artifact to give it plus two, plus two. So what you want to do with your ATOC deck is find the right moment to sack all those artifacts and kill your opponent or make it really difficult for your opponent to decide whether or not to block. You know, if you block, you may, you know, lose a very good creature, but you have to block the ATOC or else you could sack an X amount of artifacts and take the game out of nowhere. And around the ATOC, there's just a lot of di direct damage and damage dealing cards, right? We see four lightning bolts, two disintegrates, three chain lightnings. Then we see also Triskelions in this deck. Triskelion is, you could say, a very expensive lightning bolt, right? You pay six and you can deal three damage instantly if it doesn't get countered. Um, and then we also see uh, Black Vice and Ankh of Mishra. I always like the synergy. It's a very classic synergy. Black Vice punishes the opponent for having too many cards in hand and Ankh of Mishra punishes uh, everybody for playing out lands. And what you want to do when you have a Black Vice against you, you want to empty your hand um, so that you can, you know, you want to play land so you can empty your hand. That's what I'm trying to say. But the Ankh of Mishra, of course, is going to punish you for that because you take two damage for every land you play out. So that's always some, you know, nice synergy between those two cards. And of course, uh, we see a Wheel of Fortune there and the Wheel of Fortune works together very well with the Black Vice. Now, the thing here is we don't see any Moxen or Accelerators in the deck of Wouter. We do see, of course, the Felwer Stones and the Mana Vault. So I guess there is some acceleration there and, and, and the Soul Ring. But I'm afraid it may be too slow for the fully powered deck that Wouter is playing against today. So for me, Hank is definitely a favorite. That being said, a deck like this can be very explosive, can win out of nowhere. It's 
packed with direct damage so he doesn't actually have to deal that much damage with his creatures he can just finish it off with direct damage so there are definitely possibilities here for Wouter in round number one okay we looked at the deck of Hank we looked at the deck of Wouter let's go to the game game number one here we go so on the left we have Hank he's on the play with his robots deck and on the right we have Wouter with his Atok deck look at that start by Hank here so many Moxen there's also a Mana Vault and a pass so lots of mana sources so that means only three cards in hand remaining for Hank here there we see a Mishra's Factory and a pass and I do believe that Wouter needs to correct his life total by the way he's still on 20 of course we just started the match so not on 18 there we see an underground sea and a pass so no artifact creatures for Hank here I mean if you're Hank you were probably hoping to find a Suchi or a Trike by now and put some early pressure on there we see a mountain there is an Atok by Wouter and we can kind of see the hand of Wouter here it looks like he's got a trike in hand he's got a blood moon in hand there we see another land so Hank is finding tons of mana sources but he's not finding any creatures also no removal on the Atok just the past turn there we see a chain lightning in hand for Wouter there is a strip mine he could play the moon the blood moon but I think in this matchup the blood moon is not going to be that great and of course when he plays the blood moon I mean he also takes out his own Mishra's uh, factory tapping two here and okay there we see an ank of Mishra and he's not attacking I'm a little bit surprised that he's not attacking I would have definitely attacked here with the Atok what do you have to lose I believe he just drew into a Suchi. There is a Mishra's Workshop, so he's going to take two damage. Now he is on 18. And okay, there is a Triskelion, so it's looking quite good. So even though Hank had a brilliant start, there was no follow up play. So I believe that Wouter should not be on 16, but should be on 18. And he's just played the Triskelion here as well, so it's looking good for Wouter. I wonder what Hank has in hand. Perhaps he's just got tons of removal in hand there. And maybe uh, Hank is happy with the trike, because if he has a copy artifact, he can now copy the trike. That's exactly what he's going to do. And now, of course, Wouter can respond. He could kill his own trike. In that case, Hank is forced to choose another topic, uh, uh, target, I mean. But I'm sure that Hank is happy with that, because in that way, copy artifact kind of works as removal and yeah now he's going putting it back on the right life total he is on 18 so he wants to copy the Triskelion and the way this works is that Wouter can now respond to that so if he wants he could destroy his own trike it looks like he's not going to though part of me kind of expected him to deal two damage to Hank destroy his own Triskelion He's not doing that though. And time will tell if that's, that is a good decision or not. And now he's going to play a Shatter. Oh, 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 this is a good line of play by Hank. So, of course, three damage here dealt by Wouter. And then, of course, probably feeding the trike to the Atok as well. So that means Hank is going to drop to 16. And maybe you're wondering uh, why Wouter is uh, carrying that Raging Bull Ring. That is because he is the reigning champion. He won the online event. Which was quite an accomplishment because he played with his Atok deck. So he played it powerless, which was really cool to see. But for now, it looks like he's in trouble. So this was a very good turn here by... Uh, by Hank and that was kind of all enabled by Wouter playing out that Triskelion so that's quite interesting right you play out a trike and yet you're helping your opponent there we see a Felwer Stone one mana floating still from the workshop he's got that Suchi in hand he could play out looks like he's a little bit in the tank here about what to do he's got a lot of options Tapping three and casting the Suchi. 
He could now, of course, attack with the ATOC, but passing turn instead. I'm a little bit surprised here. Then again, I mean, I'm sure Wouter knows what he's doing, but I would probably play a little bit more aggressive with my ATOC. Because he's giving Hank a lot of time to kind of draw into cards that will get him back into this match. Because he had he had a great start with the mana sources, Hank, but he couldn't have a follow-up. There's a shatter, though. That is unfortunate. Obviously, he's going to feed it again to the Atok. So the Atok is now a 3-4. Remember, there's no mana burn in Swedish, so he's not going to take 4 damage for it. Tapping... Another mana for a mana vault, number two. Tapping both vaults, another Triskelion hitting the board. I think one card in hand for Hank in the pass. This is not looking great here for Wouter. He's got a vice in hand, at least that's some food for the Atok. That's the nice thing when you play with Atog that the artifacts are never a dead card. They always have a double function in your deck. He still has a trike in hand as well. Looks like he's going to cast a trike here. Tri uh, there goes the trike, so 4-4 four, four again. So it's really a trike war. Is he going to attack here? He is going to attack. Interesting move. And here we see Hank simply taking the one damage. He's like, okay, sure. But I think this is a good move by Wouter. And I wonder if he's going to untap one of the mana vaults. So he's going to untap a mana vault, going to take one damage for the other mana vault, going to drop to 14. You know, every point of damage is a point of damage, especially when you play with an aggressive deck like Wouter's with all the chain lightnings and the bolts, disintegrates, you know. So that one point of damage can definitely matter. I wonder if Hank is going to attack for 8 here with his two trikes. Then he could put Wouter on 10, and then he still has 6 direct damage laying on his trikes. This is why Triskelion is so good. Of course, Wouter can then choose to block with his strike. So Hank a little bit in the tank here, trying to find his best line of play. It looks like he wants to attack here, although he's not turning his robot sideways yet. He's on 14, Wouter on 18, game number one. Round number one as well. There we see him attacking with one trike. It looks like Wouter is going to accept a trade. Both creatures die. And will Hank do anything here second main? Just passing a turn. I believe two. Does he have two cards in hand? It's hard to see. Anyway, passing turn to Wouter. Wouter having four cards in hand there. I see a chain lightning. And you can see him think. What could his best line of play be? I think I see another Atok. I see a mountain in hand. It's hard to tell what that third card is there after the mountain. He can, of course, attack again. Remember, every land he plays out, he takes two damage. Look at that. He's activating the factory. And he's doing this, of course, because he has that chain lightning in hand. There we see a bolt. So then, of course, he's going to feed it to the Atok. I think this is a good move. Making it a 3-4. That means at least three points of damage here for Hank. He's also going to sack the Ankh of Mishra, so dealing even more points so. So five points of damage, Hank dropping to nine now. Playing out a land, so taking no damage because the Ankh's gone. And passing the turn. So Hank untapping his other mana vault, not taking any damage from the vaults anymore. Two cards in hand now, it seems, while playing a land, so one card in hand still. There's the attack for 4, so Wouter's going to drop to 14. I mean, it's looking pretty good now for Wouter, and it's just to hope, you know, if you're Wouter, you're really hoping that, that Hank cannot find, like, an Ancestral Recall or a Brain Geyser or any of those cards, because that will get him back into the game. 
And things are looking pretty good here for, for Wouter, actually. And I wonder what Hank is going to do if Wouter is going to attack now with the ATOG. He's probably first going to play out device, right? Because that's food for the ATOG, exactly. He's got two floating, but no artifacts in hand. Still has that Blood Moon. I could consider actually playing out the, the Blood Moon now. And the reason I'm saying that is because the Blood Moon kind of blocks the colors blue for Hank. So that means he cannot play out those power cards if he top decks into one. So it could be worth it to kind of play the Blood Moon. But first the attack with the ATOC. Let's see what Hank's going to do. I think he's just going to take the one damage here. Drop to eight. Ooh, now he's going to feed it. He's going to deal three points of damage. Going to put him on six. This is a very good strategy here by Wouter. Remember, he's got Chain Lightnings and Bolts in his deck. He's two bolts away from the victory. I would really play out the Blood Moon. Yes! Well done, Wouter. Again, it's easy to say these things from my position, right? When I'm in the game, it's completely different. But for me, this seems to be the right play because it blocks the blue cards and, the, and also the black cards in his deck, the Demonic Tutor, you know, the Mind Twist, the cards that can get him back in the game. There we see a Cyblast, though. Is he going to kill the Atok? No, playing it directly on Wouter, putting him on 10. And this is risky, though, because there we see. Oh, now he's winning it. <laughs> oh, he's winning it here because of the side blast, of course. Hank put two damage on himself, putting him on three. And then there was that chain lightning play by Wouter. So Wouter winning this one despite that super opener by Hank and that kind of shows you can have all the power in your deck but if you don't have that follow-up it's not going to happen so this is one game up for Wouter both players are going to dive into the sideboards now and we'll catch back up with them in game number two game number two here we go so there we go underground sea and a pass and then of course in the upkeep the ancestral recall here again a really good start for Hank I think this start is even better, right? You just want to have a lot of cards. And if you can find Moxon as well, we could see a very explosive turn number two. But let's first see a turn one by Wouter. Just a Mishra's Factory and a pass. And I believe we're going to see some fireworks. Or maybe not. You know, maybe Hank cannot find the Moxon and the Mana Volts. Okay, there we see the Mana Volt and a pass. So this is a really good start again for Hank. Perhaps next turn he can drop a trike. There we see a mountain by Wouter. Tapping two for a Felwer Stone. Tapping one for a Mana Vault. So he's also ramping up and doing quite successfully so. So his turn three could be quite interesting as well. So both players kind of setting up here. I wonder what Hank is going to do now. Drop a land, perhaps a trike. And then next turn copy on the trike. These are all possibilities. And I think if you're Wouter, you really have to keep that copy artifact in mind all the time. It is a danger. Obviously, Wouter boarded in his uh, Red Blast, I assume, from the sideboard. So it's going to give him some weapons against the copy. Untapping again. It looked like he wanted to attack for a moment there. Maybe with the Mishra's Factory. Tapping the Mana Vault for three. Playing a Felwer Stone. One mana still floating. Tapping the one two mana. Playing a Shatter on the Mana Vault here of Wouter. Of course, these are interesting lines of place because he could have also tapped his lands, avoiding tapping the Vault. So I wonder what he wants to do still with the other lands. Does he have, for example, a Demonic Tutor in hand? Yep, there's the Demonic Tutor. What is he going to look up? Ancestral Recall already out of the deck. I mean, this is... This is the big question, right? What is he going to look up? He could look up, of course, a Mind Twist. That would be pretty gross, but maybe a good idea. The next turn, he can take out a lot of cards out of Wouter's hand. Of course, he already took care of the Mana Vault, meaning it's going to be really tough for Wouter to play out that Trike next turn. So here we see Hank shuffling up. I think the Mind Twist might be the best option here, but 
We'll just have to wait and see. Hank putting the cards back and passing the turn, I assume. And Wouter taking his turn. Untapping, upkeep, draw. What does he have there? Another land? He can play out the Suchi. He's got a Suchi in hand as well, so he now has four mana. I could play out the Suchi. It looks like that's what he's going to do. Yep, there's the Suchi. 4-4 four, four creature from Antiquities. When it dies, you get four colorless mana. And here we see Hank taking a damage from his own mana vault, going down to 19. Drawing a card for turn as well. Let's see what he can do. Does he have that mind twist? If he does, he can take care of the entire hand of Wouter. That would be pretty brutal. I'm kind of expecting it, to be honest, but... Maybe he looked up another card. Nope, he did not. There's a mind twist for four, right? Yep, mind twist for four. Yuck. Taking care of the entire hand of Wouter. So he's losing a bolt. Also didn't have any red mana open to cast that bolt. That's a shame, though. Shatterstorm, I think, came in from the side. That's really nice to see. I like the synergy between Atok and Shatterstorm, right? You first eat up all your own artifacts, have a really big Atok, then cast a Shatterstorm, killing all the blockers of your opponent because they're all going to be artifact creatures in the case of, uh, of Hank. And now, of course, if you're Wouter, you got to play aggressively. So he's going to attack here for six, putting Hank on 13. And pass turn. So just one card in hand, of course, for Wouter after that brutal mind twist. I wonder if Hank's going to untap the Volt or just take the damage drop to 12. I mean, if you look at it from, from you know, there's always a silver lining here for Wouter. At least Hank is already on 12. And if he can just draw into his direct damage, who knows uh, what will happen. Here we see Hank tapping 6, so I'm expecting a trike here. The 4-4 four, four creature from Antiquities. Yep, there's a Triskelion, so we have the 4-4. Four, four. And now there's the untap here by Wouter. Can't really see what's in his hand. He's got two cards. I mean, he could pretend to have a chain in hand. Maybe he does, by the way. So he's attacking for six. I think this is a good decision. Wouter has to put the pressure on kind of forcing Hank here to make difficult decisions. One of the lines for Hank could be to take two counters off killing the factory and take four points of damage for the Suchi. I'm not sure if that's the right line. He could also decide to just block the Suchi, trade it. I don't think he wants to take six damage here because that would put him on six and that's a double chain lightning or double bolt away from, uh, from losing this game and losing the first match actually. He is one game behind. So he's going to block the Suchi. That means he's going to drop to 10. So they're going to trade. He's going to drop to 10 because of the factory damage. Second main. No, just a pass by Wouter. Untap here. Is he going to untap the Volt? Or take the damage? Probably first going to check his hand. And he is taking the damage. That is interesting. Going to 9. Finding a library of Alexandria, but he doesn't really have the time to sit back and relax. Tapping two, tapping four, tapping six. Are we going to see another trike? So in this case, I think he could have untapped the mana vault here. Then again, maybe he wants to keep his one source open for a bolt, for example, on the factory. There is a low end. Bout is like, yeah, this is not useful right now after the twist. And uh, for Hank, it's just really important that he doesn't go, you know, below seven. Like, if he's on six, he's very vulnerable. And, uh, yep, he's going to untap the vault. That makes perfect sense that he's on nine. That's kind of a safer number. You know, when you're playing against that much direct damage, you really don't want to go too low. Two cards in hand for Wouter. He's tapping two, or is, is he going to play a copy? Copy artifact. This is the game that he wants to play. And Vout is like, oh, do you want to copy my Felwer Stone? Go ahead. Unfortunately for him, it's not the Felwer. It's the Trike, of course. He's going to deal four. He's going to drop to 16. But uh, here we really see Hank what he, doing what he wants to do, right? Kind of controlling the game. 
There is a vice. Only two cards in hand for Hang Do. I believe there is a vice and a land, and I don't know what the third card is. It's hard to see. And there's the pass. So three cards in hand still. And here we see Hank kind of checking out his mana base before drawing a card for turn. He can attack now for eight. Put Wouter on eight. You could also consider attacking exactly with the factory as well. Attack for ten. Kind of forcing Wouter to start using his Mistress Factory. If he does, and Hank's got a bolt. So there we see the animate. And I'm expecting a bolt here. Or maybe a shatter. Is it going to be a shatter? Shatter. It's a gunner, so that means he's gonna actually gonna drop to six, and then he can take the counters off, kill Wouter here. So it's over for Wouter already, I believe, because two trikes is four, each is eight damage, two points from the factory is gonna drop to six. Now he can take the counters off, exactly, and that's it. That is game number two, going to hang. That means we've got a one one, and we're going to game number three. I love it. Game number three, who is going to win this one, Wouter or Hank? Wouter's on the play. So that gives him a little bit of an edge, starting with a Mana Vault. Good opener here for Wouter. Let's see what Hank can do on his turn one. Oh, Library of Alexandria, of course. Of course, why not? Ooh, that is just, that is just dirty. So I think if you're Wouter now, you really want to try to accelerate, go as fast as possible, put pressure on Hank's life total, forcing... Uh, there's, okay, there's a Rook Egg, but not a land drop for turn. That is unfortunate, though. That is unfortunate. That's not the kind of pressure that you want. Like ideal, an ideal situation would have been a mountain, play, the mount, play a chain lightning with that, destroy your own rook egg, get a 4-4 bird. And here we see Hank reading the card just to be 100% sure of what it does. Now, now he has got nine cards in hand. And remember, he's playing all the moxins, so he can accelerate. I mean, this is just super tough. There we see a Mox Sapphire. I'm also expecting a land drop here. Maybe just a pass. Exactly, just a pass. He's got seven in hand. Why would he, you know, do anything else? And there we do see a land, I believe. So that's good news, at least. And we also see a Chain Lightning. So that's kind of nice. So he can use that Chain. Then he gets a 4-4 Flyer at the end of turn. There's a Chain Lightning. Maybe that wasn't the land that he just drew. Maybe I was wrong. Okay, it was a land. Okay, playing out the land, putting on the chain. So that means that the, on his end step, he gets a 4-4 flying bird. And I think he's going to get a token. And it would have been so much better. I mean, it's still okay, Wouter, but you do understand that I, I would have wished for you to have that second land in turn two. So you could have had that 4-4 bird token already. And you could have started attacking with it. Uh, we do here see the Chandelar token, I, I think. Oh, man. There is the uh, blue elemental blast coming in from the sideboard, destroying the bird. That is unfortunate. So he's going to untap, draw a card for turn. Now he's on seven again, I believe. He can now use his lower to go to eight. It's looking, it's looking very bad here for Wouter. There we see a mox. Okay, and now he's drawing. Playing an underground C. And playing a mind twist. Yuck. Man, that's just nat. This is being super mean, Hank. Come on. Give the guy a break. So, Wouter, I mean, this is going to be super tough for you. I guess if you're Wouter, you're kind of maybe hoping for a Wheel of Fortune, right? First needs another land, though. Is this a vice? At least the Vice is going to hurt Hank a little. Vice is a pretty good weapon against uh, the Library of Alexandria. So there are six cards in hand, so he's going to drop to 15. Now he's going to untap. Well, that Mind Twist was really brutal. It was already difficult enough playing against the Loa. And I guess Hank is now going off. No, he's not going off the Loa plan just yet. He's going to draw an extra card. 
playing a factory, so seven in hand now. What is he going to do next? Tapping three. Okay, casting a Surrendip, a Freet. So I guess this card came in from the sideboard. And what else? Just a pass turn. So it looks like he doesn't really mind the damage that much from the Vice. And we see uh, Wouter dropping to 17 because of his own Volt, drawing for turn, passing turn. There is a Bolt on the life total here of Wouter dropping to 14. Five in hand, just taking a single damage and of course a damage from his own Efreet, so he's going to drop to 12 here it seems. He can attack for three, put Wouter on 11. And of course he can attack with his factories. He's got two factories he hasn't used yet. He can use those to swing in as well, dealing seven points of damage. That's actually quite a lot, but maybe Hank prefers to empty his hand first. Playing a Volcanic Island. Tapping... Four, five. Is he going to play a trike for six here? There we see the Triskelion. There we go. So, I mean, it's looking super good for Hank here. I mean, if you're Wouter and Wouter knows this, you kind of need a miracle to get back from this. Four cards in hand for Hank passing turn, taking a damage Wouter from his own vault, going to 10. And the next turn, it could already be over for Wouter because he's on 10. He's going to take 7 from the trike in the uh, Surrendip. Then, of course, Hank can take off his other counters to kill him. So this is super difficult. Probably the last turn here for Wouter. Yeah, I mean, playing a Chain Lightning, that's really all he can do here. And uh, then we see Hank taking the damage. So he's on 9. Taking the damage for the Surrender, going to go to eight. Four cards in hand, no damage from the Vice. And now he can finish the job. Playing an Island. Attacking here, not, not animating. Okay, he is animating, I thought for a moment. Maybe he's just taking the risk. That's it, winning here, game number three. And yeah, the deck of Hank, it's just super, super strong. All the power cards. This was an uphill battle from the start, but Wouter, you did great in that game number one. And I mean, this game three, come on, you know, after the mind twist, he opened with the Loa, then there was that mind twist. There's just nothing you can do against it. It sometimes happens and it is what it is. Okay, well, thank you, Hank and Wouter, for playing here on Timmy Talks and of course for participating in the Raging Bull series. Now, if you enjoyed this match, the good news is, every Friday all the way on to the finals I will have a new match for you from the Raging Bull series so keep an eye on the channel if you're new to old school welcome to old school please subscribe and ring that bell so that you don't miss anything right here on Timmy Talks and uh, before you go I'd like to ask you to like share and comment on this video all of that helps Timmy Talks move forward and talking about that Please, um, I'd like a moment of your time to inform you about the Timmy Talks Patreon page because on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, I have my very own Patreon program and there you can go if you want to sponsor the channel so you can support the channel financially for just $1 a month. And the cool thing is uh, you get some perks back. So you can join all the Timmy Talks online tournaments. That's the first thing. But secondly, you also get access to the exclusive Timmy Talks Discord and the third thing is, your name will be mentioned at the end of every single video in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll.
Ik het als fikker te samba gezien.